afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. How are you guys doing today? So it's me, Brother Ron, from Metanoia Christian Ministry. So hello, hello. It is good to be back. It is good to see you all again today. So praise God. Kamusta po kayo, mga kapatid? How are you guys doing? Okay naman? So far, so good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Jesus. So we're just setting up, and um, whew, I hope everyone is doing well. Everyone is blessed. Okay, naman. You know what, guys? I'm just really encouraged. I just want to share with you. You know, after these, I, after these Bible studies, you know, we we're so blessed. You know, the Lord really knows how to encourage his um, his children, and um, you know, we get we get a lot of messages. Uh, about questions and and people who want to know more about God and that is a great encouragement um, for us you know it shows that people are now asking about the Word of God people are now digging deeper into the Word of God and that is so awesome that is such a blessing and I'm so thankful for that so you know what you know the guys and I have been talking are, are um, the members of our ministry and uh, leaders of our ministry and uh, we decided, so this is just an announcement. I decided to announce it right now. Um, we'll be doing uh, Q&A sessions aside from this live Bible study. So if you guys have questions about the Bible, questions about, um, you know, scripture, stuff that's always been confusing you, send the page, this page, the Metanoia Christian Ministries page, send, send a message and um, ask away, ask the question. Some of you have been asking questions, that's good. You know, uh, better if the question is related to whatever I taught the day before or one of the previous messages or, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it's better since it's well, medio fresh. But uh, regardless, if you have questions in your heart about the word of God, send the page a message and um, either me or some of the leaders in the ministry will come back up with a short video and answer those questions. So I believe, at least praise God, we have an avenue for that. We are excited to hear your questions. We are excited, not because we have, I'm not claiming to know everything, okay? I'm not claiming a perfect to me, of course not. You know, we are all, all of us are students of the word of God, you know, but my point is if you're asking questions, that means you have the desire to know God. So that's a good thing, and we are so encouraged. So if you guys have questions, again, please send a message. Wag sana comment uh, live. Um, I mean, just send us a message, please. You know, <laughs> so um, para at least more organized namin yung mga questions niyo. Again, some of you have been doing that. We have been answering um, questions through the page. Some some people have approached me personally. I've been answering uh, questions as well. And I mean that's fine. That's great. It's a it's a pleasure for us to do that. It's a blessing for us to do that. It's just um yeah. If if your question doesn't get on the video, we will answer you through Messenger or maybe um we have a previous message or a previous teaching that answers your question. So we, we will just send you the link to that one. Okay. So. Anyway, uh, good afternoon ulit, mga kapatid. Welcome sa ating mga kapatid who are just joining us right now. And I am very blessed to be here. So today, I am excited to share the word, as always, as every day. And um, I, have, I have a very simple message for today. Very simple, but it is very essential. So, you know, I pray that you will really receive uh, this message for today. Again... Uh, clarify lang ha, sa mga Q&A please send to this page to the Metanoia Christian Ministries page so we can um, we can compile all of them because it might not just be me who's going to be answering okay some of our brothers and sisters in the ministry may also be you know para makilala nyo rin sila naging ano ko eh naging poster boy ako big <laughs> you know uh, but, but um, praise God we have a lot of awesome and wonderful men and women of God who are super spirit-filled and truly love Jesus and Christ is really evident in their lives. So they're going to be going on uh, on camera as well and be sharing the word with all of you. So so praise the Lord. Let's pray. Let's start with a prayer. Lord God, Father, we thank you for this time. I thank you 
for my brothers and sisters who are watching this. I thank you, Lord, that um, these hearts are seeking, Lord, that these people desire to know you. And I, I know, Lord, that you said in your word, seek and you shall find, ask, it will be given, knock and it will be opened. And I know, Lord, that um, you will not deny this. You will not deny us this opportunity to get to know you more. From the very beginning, you've always wanted this relationship, Lord. Here we are. We are drawing near to you. And scripture says that when we draw near to you, God, you draw near to us. And it is such a privilege, Lord, to, to, to know your ways. It is such a privilege to study your word. It is such a privilege to have fellowship with my brothers and sisters here. So, Lord, I lift up to you this time. I lift up to you every single person watching this. And I speak a blessing upon them. Father, we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So hello, brothers and sisters, and I love I love this. You know, it's so cool. It's so cool. Um, guys, you know, before all this whole quarantine lockdown thing, I never, ever, ever imagined myself doing an online Bible study. Because I'm not going to You know, but if this is how we preach the Word of God, this is how we preach the Word of God. Whatever it takes. And it's awesome because now we have new friends. We have friends from Canada. We have friends from Japan. We have friends from the U.S., Singapore, and all these other areas, and praise God for you guys. All over the country, all over the Philippines. Um, so, welcome. And you guys are awesome. And um, we're blessed. Anyway, so today, I want to cover something basic. Something... Actually, uh, sorry, not really basic, but more on foundational. Okay? And I want to make sure that everyone is has the same foundation, the same base, the same understanding. Otherwise, my other teachings will not make sense, you know. So I want everyone to just, you know, come together and just really have that, um, have this solid foundation of, like, where, where did all these teachings come from? Where did all these truths come from? You know, I get messages from you guys. I've never heard anyone say this or anyone say that. I've been a Christian for X number of years. I don't understand this. I don't understand that. So, you know, I want to I wanna lay down the foundation of how um, these messages come about and how the Lord reveals the truths. Because again, it's not about me, it's not about this ministry, it's about Jesus. And it's about your relationship with God. So, whatever we teach here, again, I say this over and over again, whatever we teach here, we encourage you to go back to your Bible, go read it, Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth because that's his job and he will speak it to you and it will come alive in your heart. You know, um, I encourage everyone to check the Bible. Don't just take it because I said it. I want you to go and find it for yourself in the Bible. Otherwise, you, your faith is in my faith and that's not how it is. Don't, have, don't put your faith in my faith. Put your faith in the Word of God. All right? You have to own it. You have to own the revelation. You have to own the truth. There is no, um, no such thing as secondhand faith. Okay, so you need, you need to build up yourself in the, in the most holy faith. Okay, so anyway, so let's go. I want to talk about Mark 4, the parable of the sower. And again, there, this has been taught time and time and time and time and time again. And uh, I, want to, I want to show something different today. You know, I want to show something different today and I pray that this will be a blessing to you. So let's go to Mark 4. Uh, let's start with verse 2. Okay, I'm reading from the NASB translation today. Okay, so, so if you guys notice, by the way, napansin nyo, medyo mahilig ako lumipat-lipat ng translation. Why? Because the new, um, the, the new Testament was written in Greek originally. So what we have are translations of the original language. And there is no perfect translation, okay? There is no perfect translation. You really have to discern. Every certain translation has a certain doctrinal slant. Depending on who you don't translate, depending on whoever translated the, so it's always good to go back, you know, check through different translations, check through different, you know, check the original, go purchase or download a Strong's or Thayer's concordance that checks the real word, what is what is the meaning behind it, you know, be diligent, seek the word, you know, intindihin natin si God, intindihin natin yung word now. We've been given the mind of Christ and the Holy Spirit, so we can do it, right? We have the opportunity to know God more. Maybe not completely in this lifetime, but I'm going to go as, as much as I can. I'm going to go for it as much as I can. So let's go to Mark 4. There's the parable of the sower. Okay, Mark 4 verses 2 to 9. I will read through it first, okay? So it says here, Mark 4 verse 2. 
and he was teaching them many things in parables and was saying to them in his teaching, listen to this. Behold, the sower went out to sow as he was sowing some seed fell beside the road and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground where it did not have much soil and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of soil. And after the sun had risen, it was scorched and because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns and the thorns came up and choked it and yielded it, it yielded no crop. Other seeds fell into the good soil and as they grew up and increased they yielded a crop that produced 30 60 and a hundredfold and he was saying he who has ears let him hear so this is the parable of the sower and i don't know about you guys you know i i it, i've been uh, i took up a hobby of gardening okay for the past maybe two years now i've been gardening i've been i've been learning how to grow well, peppers and exotic fruits and like a lot of stuff you don't see at the market, you know. Hobby ko lang, wala lang, katawaan ko lang. And, you know, that that was my quiet time. That when I, when I am, um, pag nandun ako sa garden, naayos ko yung mga halaman, spray ako ng mga vitamins sila, naayos ko yung abono, yung mga ganyan. That's my quiet time. That's my time that I talk to God. That's my time that I meditate on the Word. That's my time that sometimes I just pray in tongues for a whole hour or two hours, just, just out there, you know, and, um, I learned so much. I like after after um, spending so much time in my garden. I learned so much more about the gospels and the parables Jesus used and the expressions that he made because I actually I understand it. Like I have fig trees, I have a mulberry tree. I know what a how mustard seeds grow and you know ang galing eh. You know what I mean? So it just gave me that whole different perspective. Get school kung bakit sinasabi ni God yun. So I mean no, I'm not. I'm not saying everyone has to go gardening. Okay, that's just me. But I enjoyed it and I appreciated the gospel more. So um, this parable is very close to my heart because it's it's right next to my hobby. It's sowing seed and planting stuff, right, and bearing fruit, and you enjoy the fruit of your labor. So what happened here? This is not like today. It's not like today. Now we get the seeds. Isa isa papat natin. That that time, kuha siya ng seeds. Dakot dakot yan. So they're they're gonna grab it and then there's. They just, yung hinahasik lang ba, kung saan-saan. They just throw it. Throw it wherever. In, the, in a general area. And then, they just trust that it's gonna grow. So, they did not, um, they did not uh, really, they were not very careful about how they planted the seed. You know what I mean? But, I mean, that's the point. You know, what is the seed here? The seed is representing the Word of God. And you preach it everywhere. You don't preach it to just people you like. You preach the Word of God everywhere. And you know, so this is this is awesome. I understand why God, um, why the Lord used this parable to 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 share these truths. So anyway, in Mark four, Mark four verse thirteen, it says, um, and he said to them, "Do you not understand this parable? How will you understand all the parables, guys?" It again, it's have to go basic teaching because this is the foundational parable. Like if you don't understand this. Like if you don't understand this, then I don't know how you're going to understand the rest of the Word of God. You see, what's Jesus? Like, if you can't get past this, if you can't get this, and it means a whole lot more than what you just see on the on on the text. Okay, so I'm going to go through this, guys. Uh, just just um, just tune in because you, you might hear something that you've not not heard before. So anyway, so Jesus was giving us directions and and uh, guidance about how the kingdom of God works. Okay. How the kingdom of God works. So if we can't understand this, there is a big problem. Mark 4 verse 14. It says, the sower sows the word. So again, just like in the parable, the, the word is sown, you know, abundantly. They just don't, they, they don't care where it goes. Just throw it everywhere. It's going to grow. You know, so, um, so super awesome. And that's how we should do with the Word of God. You don't share it to people you just like. You share it to everyone, even to people you don't like, right? And there are different kinds of soil. But see, here's the thing. The Word of God is the same. The Word of God is alive and powerful. The Word of God will accomplish what He said it to do. The Word of God will not um, return to Him void. The Word of God will never fail. The Word of God will never disappear. It's the Word of God. It is immovable. It is perfect. 
But what changes is the soil, not the seed. Let's see, the sower sows the word. So the seed is the word of God. Now let's go to 1 Peter 1 verse 23. So I'm reading from the New King James here. I like the New King James better. Okay. 1 Peter 1 verse 23, it says, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So the word of God is not corruptible seed, it is incorruptible seed. In, in the NASB, it's imperishable. immortal, So if you guys, I see some comments of people like saying they have gardens and stuff now and they're planting seeds, especially my one brother who really likes ginger and I know he loves ginger so much. Um, so he plants a lot of ginger. Anyway, my point, my point is, guys, sometimes you plant bad seeds, right? Sometimes bad seeds, sometimes they're stale. Like they've been there for so long, it's not exactly a good uh, bunch anymore. But, you know, there have also been like discoveries. I, I remember reading an article about some archaeologist finding seeds in an Egyptian tomb, like underneath the pyramids or something. It's been there for like 4,000 years. And then they actually tried to plant the seed and then it still grew. So if a regular seed can last that long and still have life in it what more the word of god the word of god is a seed it is the incorruptible seed it is the perfect seed no matter where you put it the power is there the word of god is unchanging that seed is perfect and anywhere you put them that seed is, is still the same quality okay but what changes, what, what, what yields the, the, the reason why there are different results is not because of the seed. That's my point. It's because of the soil. Okay? So the seed is not the problem. The seed is perfect. The seed is incorruptible. You cannot corrupt it. You cannot, it, it will not perish. It is absolutely perfect. And there is life in there. So guys, think about it. Um, you know, a lot of people say, ano ba to, seed time, harvest, Diko gets. You know that the whole Bible is about seed time and harvest. Everything. Even from the beginning. Even, even when, when, when the Lord God created the world, He created fruits that, uh, uh, fruit-bearing trees that have seed and bear after its own kind. That's just how everything works. Everything. Even a human being. You know, the word seed is, uh, is uh, spora, which is also sperm out, like sperm. It's a seed. Everything is seed. Everything is seed that you plant and everything grows. That's just how everything operates. That's why this is very, very uh, essential to understand. Like this whole parable. Okay? So again, First Peter 1.23, the seed is incorruptible. The word of God is a seed. It is perfect. So why the different results? It is the soil. So let's go through it. Mark 4 verse 15. This one talks about the roadside, the wayside. Okay? These are the ones who are beside the road where the word is sown, and when they hear, immediately Satan comes and takes away the word which has been sown in them. So, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. These are people who have received the word, got the word, the soil, and um, Satan just plucked it away. So, you know, it bothers me sometimes that people are like, Para walang pumapasok, hindi ko talaga naintindihan, kinuha ni Satan yung word. Okay. Where is it planted? What is the soil? If you go to Matthew 13 verse 19, it says, When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. See, Matthew 13 is the same parable. Okay, just told a slightly different way. But there are details here that are not found in Mark that are very important. See, I want to look, let's go there. Matthew 13 verse 19, I'm reading from the NASB. So when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, see, that's the thing. Just because you hear me doesn't mean you understand me. Okay? It's one thing to hear. It's another thing to understand. Understanding is knowing what to do with that knowledge that you just heard, that data that you just heard. Okay? So when people don't understand the word of God, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. Here's the thing. Um, if you are on the roadside, what kind of soil is that? It is hardened. 
matigas. Hindi bumabaon yung seed kasi sobrang siksik. Yung roadside nga eh. So siksik yan, it's hard. The, 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 the seed never goes through. It's just on top. That's why it's so easy to steal. And here's the thing. The soil, according to Matthew 13 verse 19, is your heart. That is where the word of God is planted. The seed is planted. So the roadside is hard. And if the soil is your heart, so this type of person with this kind of heart has a hardened heart. The word could not penetrate. It was just on the surface. You know, and Satan is just waiting to snatch you. It's his job. John 10 verse 10. Remember, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus came that we may have life and life in abundance. So Satan's job is to steal the word. Why? So that you don't have life in abundance. You will never enter abundant life if, if Satan just keeps on stealing the word. Right? So here's the thing. How do we prevent this? How do we prevent this? How do we make sure that we're not the, the, the roadside? You know, I, I've heard teachings on this, like, oh, sometimes, sometimes we're the roadside, sometimes we're the good soil, sometimes we're like this, sometimes we're like that. You know, that's a choice. That's a choice. You got no one else to blame but you for what kind of soil your heart is. Because those are decisions we made. Not and not Satan is not gonna steal it just because, like, whatever. He's gonna steal it from rocky soil. He doesn't steal it from good soil. So let us make sure and always check our hearts that we are not hardened, that we have not been grown, uh, we have not grown cold, that we have not been, you know, ignoring the Lord. See, here's the problem. It says here in Matthew 13 that they didn't understand it. I don't think it's just comprehension that's the problem. You know, really, I don't think it's comprehension. People say, oh, the gospel is so complicated. The Bible is so hard to read. That is not true. This is super simple. The, Bi the Bible was written for everyone. The gospel is so simple, you can't miss it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, Jesus himself says, you need childlike faith. So a child could, un could grasp this. So it's not complicated. I think it's not that they don't understand, but that people do not have the desire to understand. I think that's what makes, uh, I believe that's what makes rocky soil, uh, sorry, not rocky soil, the roadside, the wayside soil, is that people, not only do they don't, don't understand, they don't have the desire. They don't have the desire, they don't see the importance of it, they don't care. Because if you would value it, you would receive it. So I think there, what, what the Lord is saying here in this passage is that cause people make it like such a, um, um, what do you call that? People keep on pointing the finger at Satan and they say, oh, Satan stole the word from me and this and that. You say, Satan, kasi is ninacha. No, he cannot do that if you grasp it. And he cannot snatch it from you if had you not hardened your heart, had you desired to really know God and value his word, and, and, and see that his words are powerful and they are alive, if you'd see that, your heart would not be hardened. Okay? Anyway, moving forward. Sorry, I, I, wanna, I wanna get on time this time. I don't wanna... <laughs> so, again, basic stuff, but I wanna, I wanna lay this out and I'll, I'll, I'll explain later. So, Mark 4, verse 16 and 17, it says, in a similar way, these are the ones on whom the seed was sown on the rocky places, so rocky soil, okay? who when they hear the word, immediately they receive it with joy. And they have no firm root in themselves, but are only temporary. Then when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately they fall away. Okay. So guys, in this rocky soil, the word was actually received. I, you know what guys, sorry. Yeah. I know so many of these people. I've, I've encountered so many of them. Again, if you guys are unfamiliar with this ministry, you know, we started out ministering to a lot of really broken people, people who came from drug addiction, life of crime, broken families, abuse, rape, uh, life-threatening diseases, you know, talagang umawasak na buhay. And we've seen the Word of God work. We've seen people come clean from many years of drug use with no rehab, no meds, no nothing, just the Word of God. We have seen people who have been in, out, in and out of... Um, of mental institutions and then it's the word of God just works we've seen people who are supposed to you know according to the doctors would be dead but then the word of God is alive and we've seen all this awesome stuff all because of the word of God 
But at the same time, I've also seen a lot of people who are like this rocky soil. Who, like the first three, four times they attend, they come like, oh my gosh, I'm so blessed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Man, they start, you know, bombarding their Facebook with, with all these Bible verses and they start, I'm going to preach the gospel to everyone and they're so on fire and they start asking me, oh, what books do you read? They buy that big fat Bible, uh, the most expensive one in the lot. You know what I'm talking about. Diba? Yung hot na hot, sobra sabi nila, wow pare, sobrang on fire yan. Yung mga yan, I've, I've, I have encountered so many of these people and my heart has been broken so many times. Why? Because a lot of them don't last. Diba? On fire, oh, on fire. You know, on fire, I'm gonna wait till about two years then tell me he's on fire. If you can sustain that for about two plus years, then, uh, then I'm gonna believe that you're on fire. Let's see. People don't even get past three, four months. And that's sad. Kasi nga, rocky soil. Unfortunately. And it's heartbreaking. Why? Because it looks great on top. Okay, if you know how to garden, if you know how to plant, the seed that grows on rocky soil, the reason why it grows so fast is because if it's rocky, the roots never penetrate down to the ground. That usually takes longer. So, the growth, the life, the, the, the nutrients of the plant have nowhere to direct it downwards, so they, they project it upwards, right? So instead of growing a root system, it grows the leaves and the big stalk and the, the stem and all that. It looks so nice, but if you flick it with the tiniest bit of force, it just falls over and dies. Why? Because it looks good on the outside. It grew so fast, but had no roots. How many people of you know that? Or how many of you guys, yourselves, have been like that? I've met people that are like, Oh, pare, dati, on fire ako eh. Pag ganito, ganyan eh. How can you encounter Jesus and let that fire die out? I don't get it. The problem is roots. We have to grow roots. Everyone is in always such a hurry. Everyone wants to look good on top, especially if you come from a broken past, especially if you screwed up so bad in your life and you want to show the world that, oh, I'm a changed person now, I'm a changed man. Pag yun minadali mo, you are asking for disaster. You can't rush it. It's a process. You can never rush a harvest. Why did God use, why did Jesus use the example of a seed? You can't cheat a seed. You can't. Like everybody right now, we're on quarantine, lockdown, this and that. If you planted seeds a second week of your quarantine, guess what? You're not going to get a harvest. You're going to harvest that like three, four months down the line or maybe later on, depending on what you're planting, right? You don't just plant and then do whatever and then rush it. You cannot rush a seed. It just, that's how it works. You can't cheat a seed. There is a process. You can't cheat a seed. You can't just say, oh, I want, I want mangoes. I'm going to buy a mango tree. Even if you buy a mango tree, it takes certain time for maturity. If you grow it from seed, it takes longer. Diba? You cannot cheat a seed. You need time. You need to care for it. You can't bypass it. So it's not about how, how, how great you look. It's, it's how long we do it. Guys, this walk with Jesus, the walk in the Spirit, this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. You know, I don't care how fast you can run because you can run really fast and get ahead of everybody but after a while you will lose and burn out because that's not how it is. This is a marathon. The point is to finish the race, not to be fast the first five minutes of it. And here's the problem. This is the rocky soil. I've seen these people. Man, people, same stories as me, same history. And they're so on fire and they're volunteering and they're like, oh yeah, I'm going to serve. I'm in ministry. I'm in this. I'm in that. Hey bro, have you been reading your Bible? I'm busy. Because God gave me all this stuff. So, you know, I'm so focused on that. I'm like, Pare, if you don't focus on the word, you're going to have trouble. If you're not deeply rooted in the word, you're going to have trouble. Ne pare, I pray naman eh. You heard that? I've heard that too many times. So pag ako nakakarinig ng mga uyan, on fire yan, natig na natin kung tatagal ka. Kasi sa dami ng kasama at dami ng pinagdaanan kong mga grupo, eh ilan naman natitira. So I'm not saying that to ano, anyone. I'm just saying, that's rocky soil. That's what rocky soil is. 
It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Who cares if you look great on top? If your roots are shallow and dead. Because at the slightest hint of persecution, it withers away. That's what it says here. You know, I plant peppers, okay? And sometimes I have um, I have this uh, seedling tray, okay? I have a seedling tray. So, tanim tanim ako seedling tray. And sometimes I'm just so busy and I, you know, guys, I preach five, five, six times a week, you know, at night, aside from my regular job, you know, so um, I'm pretty busy. Sometimes when I get home, I don't get to take care of all my plants, diba? So yung mga ibang seedling tray, napabayaan ko, and uh, they're really shallow. You're like, they're like this shallow. But the thing has grown so big, but the roots have been so small. So those those plants, napansin ko, when I transfer them to another pot, it, it's too late. They're never healthy. They never really grow well. They never really bear fruit well. Unlike the ones that gradually I increased the containers and I was able to care for them. The ones that had restricted roots, they had they were the biggest ones, you know? Sila yung pinakaunang may dahon, may true leaves na, ganyan. I could top them and do this and do that, but they never grew big and healthy. Because their roots were never developed. That's the problem of the rocky soil. You know, that's the problem with the rocky soil. There is no roots. And then guess what? You know what? It says here, it says here, when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, okay, I want to make this clear. Affliction and persecution arises because of the word, okay? Not because of your own stupidity, not, of, not because of your own mistakes or consequences of your free will or the free will of other people no i'm talking this is talking about persecution and affliction because of the word it could be a spiritual attack it could be that you came from a family who has a different religion and they're persecuting you maybe your friends are making fun of you maybe you had a bad experience with something but i for sure the enemy is preventing you from from doing that see that's what kills it when you don't have any roots, guys, here's the thing. Whether you serve God or not, you will be you will be a target of the enemy. Okay? When you start serving God, you will be a bigger target of the enemy. Because his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. That's 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 what the devil does. Steals, kills, and destroys. The exact opposite of Jesus. So, I mean, even without Jesus, he's gonna want to steal, kill, and destroy from you. But when you commit your life to Jesus, the more he's gonna attack. Persecution, because of the word, is part of the Christian life. It is the only thing that is not part of the atonement of Jesus in the cross. He said, you will be persecuted. You will have trouble. Okay? And persecution is from who? Satan, not from God. God is the one who gives you the strength to get through it, to fight against it, to endure. Persecution is from Satan. So when you start, when you turn to the to the Lord, when you receive the word and you receive it with joy and you're like, you're so excited and you're so on fire and you're so like this, are you ready to face that persecution? Because a lot of people fall apart at the slightest hit. Why? Because they have no roots. Okay? They never establish that strong connection that goes down and gets life from the source of life, from the water underground. You know what I mean? Hindi na kukuha yun eh. Never na establish yun eh. Puro porma. Puro, yeah bro, I'm such a Christian, you know. And then you start wearing those Jesus number 7 shirts and all that. And get the big Bible with a big zipper. And... Hindi ganun eh. Hindi ganun eh. So I'm not, you know, guys, I'm not making fun of people. I'm just saying, that's not Christianity. If you understand the word of God as a seed, this is how Jesus. If you don't understand this, you're not going to understand anything else. You understand the word of God as a seed. You have to grow roots first. You know, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this one thing. So everybody, everybody who serves the Lord Jesus will bump into Satan once in a while, will bump into the devil once in a while, or fairly often, depending on what ministry you're in. The problem is if you... Don't bump heads with the enemy. Maybe you're walking in the same direction. Okay? If the enemy is not bothering you or doing this and that, maybe you're not a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Maybe... <laughs> so, I mean, if you're really engaged in ministry, you are fighting against the kingdom of darkness. You are... you. Christ is living through you 
In Christ, the reason the Son of Man came was to destroy the works of the devil, and he's going to do it through you, about 1 John 3, 8. Anyway, my point is everybody gets persecuted by the enemy. Everybody will get persecuted for the word at some point or another. But I have seen so many of these people prematurely join ministry. See, people are so works-oriented. It is part of our nature, I guess. I mean, part of our... Diba? Parang na, nasanay na yung... Ano ng tao? Why? Because everything in this world, you need to work for it. Right? See, harvest. You gotta till the soil. You gotta do this. You gotta do that. You, you have a job. You do a job. You earn salary. Then you... Nothing is free. Relationships. You invest in the relationship. Nothing is free in this world except God's grace. So all of a sudden... Here is this new concept that goes contrary to everything that the human life works, everything how the human life works. And then here's this new concept of grace where you just receive it for free, but you just have to believe it sounds too easy. Diba? Parang ano eh, ang foreign ng concept eh. You know, ang foreign ng concept niya. But still, the nature, the unrenewed human mind is still stuck in that programming that, oh, I gotta do something, I gotta do, I gotta work, some work. So I'm gonna share a, a quick testimony. You know, this, there was a time I spoke at a, uh, at a retreat, okay? I'm not gonna mention where or which church or which denomination, but it was a retreat and then I, I started teaching on spiritual warfare and deliverance. So we were talking about demons and, and, uh, and casting out and freedom and this and that. So anyway, so, so it was great, super great. People were set free, you know, demons left, awesome. People encountered Jesus, wonderful. And there was one lady in the audience, older lady, who goes up and she says, oh, I'm so blessed by the message. Grabe, you know, that whole time you were saying this and that. I, you know, I kept on manifesting. I kept on burping. It kept on coming out. Grabe, I didn't know that was, you know, you know what? You know, so this was this happened in a, in a, I'm not gonna say what year, but it was a it was a November, okay? So Christmas was approaching. She was like, "Yeah, you know, after Christmas, I'm gonna take my walk seriously now." I was like, "What? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna take my walk seriously. I'll take Christianity seriously now after Christmas because I have bazaars, eh? and after that, I'm gonna join the ministry." I was I was lost for words because here's this lady who just manifested a bunch of demons at a at a preaching you know at a message and it's very abnormal for you to start manifesting that stuff I mean it's the first time she's ever encountered it she she didn't know what it was before that and she was surprised that she had a demon a demonization problem and this is someone who's been going to church for a long time she's been a Christian longer probably than I have. Okay? And she goes, yeah, after Christmas, I'm going to take my walk seriously and I'm going to join the ministry. What the heck are you doing joining the ministry? Ano yung tatapalan mo ng ministry yung mga demonyo? Uh, you're going to get a band-aid and try to cover your demons up with ministry? And then what happens? And then what's going to happen? I'm not surprised if she's probably in the ministry now. I don't know if she's going to last. And these people... Just jump into it and think that they can earn freedom or, God, or God's blessings through their works. I'm going to serve God until he blesses me. That's not grace. That's not how grace works. That's, God, I felt sad. I didn't know what to say. I tried to minister to her and share truth that, hey, God, I do not suggest. Like serving is good. Amen. That's awesome. But can you take the attack? Can you take the persecution? So many people there... You know, I, I like personally in our ministry, we do not elevate people just because, oh, matagal na yan, sige, akit ka na. Oh, yan, marami nang alam, sige, akit. We don't do that. We do not appoint anyone to do anything unless the Lord really speaks it to our heart. We don't just invite people, oh, you preach, you preach. Notice, I'm the one who's always preaching. Unless the Lord leads us to say, oh, let this person share the truth and share this message. That's what we do. We depend on the Holy Spirit. If you start creating little rules and little procedures, oh, oh, nabasa niya na yung ganyan. Sige, pwede na yan. You are appointing people who have grown up on rocky soil. So I don't care how beautiful they look on top. If they don't have roots in the bottom, guess what? They will fall at the slightest pressure of persecution because of the word. So 
I want to call out leaders here. If you guys are pastors or leaders or something, discern who you appoint. Discern. Or maybe you yourself, check your heart. Do you have roots? Is your life like a non-stop battle and struggle and this and that and you always feel condemned and giving up? Get out of ministry. Get Go focus on your relationship with Jesus first. Go focus on developing your roots in the Word. Why? Because if you don't and, and persecution hits, you're going to fall. And that's what this means. Everyone gets persecuted at some point. Okay, The enemy will attack at some point. The, problem, the question is, can you stand it? Are you rooted enough to not fall when that happens? Ministry is not a shortcut. You cannot earn God's goodness. You cannot earn God's grace. You cannot earn His blessings. Everything works through the, the seed of the Word and God's grace and faith in the Word. And that's just, that's just it. Okay? Can't, wag mong tatapalan ang ministry yung mga kasalanan mo. Hindi ka lalalim sa ministry. I'm telling you that right now. This is uh, something na ano, hindi ka lalalim sa ministry. I have seen people who have been in ministry longer than I've been alive, but they don't know Jesus. And their lives are, have been so defeated. I'm not judging, but I do not see Christ in that. Parang every time kausap mo, nakaka-depress. Kasi kawawa naman, wala nang ganito, walang ganyan. Ano nangyari kay Jesus? How can you represent Jesus? Diba? We're supposed to let Christ live through us. You, that does not look like Jesus. So, guys, ministry is no joke. If, you're, if you see rocky soil, someone with no root, or if that's you, get out of ministry. Go back to the Word. Invest time. Let the seed grow. Let the seed grow its roots in your heart that it may be strong and stable. I have nothing against people serving. Go do good works. The Holy Spirit is in you. Amen. A one-minute-old born-again Christian. I mean, right now, if you're watching and you're an atheist or you're whatever religion and then you get born again, the very first minute or first second you get born again, guess what? The power of God is inside you. And you already have more power than the enemy through the Spirit of God. Okay? You can crush Satan under your foot because of Christ in you. Even at one second old of being a born-again Christian. But, so you have the power. But what you do not have is the maturity and the wisdom to use that power. Am I making sense? So I see these people who, uh, on the other side, people who discover spiritual gifts right away. So they realize, oh, I have the power. I have the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray, healing. Oh, pray. Oh, wow. Oh, I get a word of knowledge. Yeah. And then their whole Christian walk becomes, oh, lahat, pray natin yan. Oh, heal natin to. Heal natin yan. Heal natin to. That's good. But are you reading your Bible? Because guess what? When Satan punches you, you're not going to get back up because you have no roots. It's not about works. It's not about volunteering for this or that. Remember, it is God who will elevate you. You know, in 1 Timothy 1 verse 12, it's one of my favorite verses pertaining to the ministry. You know, Paul says to Timothy, I thank the Lord God, okay, who counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. I thank the Lord my God who counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. He was not elevated by other disciples or other or because he was attending for oh naka six months kana tingko dapat time na magin leader ka that is bad discernment that is such bad discernment you don't elevate people based on length of period you could have a seventy year old boy you know that wala sa maturity eh. gifting and and whatever is is not you know you know you know what the, the sign of maturity is fruitfulness. You cannot cheat the fruits of the Spirit because fruit takes time, not gifts. Gifts are given. Gifts are, are given by grace. Fruit takes time. Fruit takes discipline. Fruit has to have a good root system. Fruit has to have good care. Diba? It is the Lord your God who puts you into service, puts you into the ministry. Not you, not me. Kasi yung kaibigan ko sabi, kailangan ng ganito. Guys, you are going to put yourself in a very dangerous position. Some of you may disagree na hindi, paserve mo, paserve mo. Tutumbahin ng demonyo yan. Guys, and if you have encountered Satan the way I have in the past, and I don't really talk about my experiences as much, but he is ruthless. 
he is really evil. He is beyond evil. Okay, I'm not going to share those testimonies here, but if you know me, take my word for it. He's really evil. He will destroy whatever is there. So I'm not saying be afraid. I'm just saying don't be stupid. Don't just jump into the ministry. You need to serve the Lord. Para pagyam binanggan si itang kawawa. And I have seen so many good people fall because they were prematurely uh, propelled into the ministry because kulang ng tao, kulang ng ganito. We don't do that. So exercise wisdom, and that that comes from my heart. Okay. Anyway, I spent more time there than I should, but um. Mark 4, 18 and 19 says, and, when, and the others are the ones whom seed was sown among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard the word, the third kind of soil. But the worries of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, the desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Okay? So the third type of soil was thorny soil that chokes out the word. Tama naman. Pag pinabayaan mo yung weeds, the weeds will take over your garden. You guys know that. I don't have to explain that so much. But here's the thing. What I want to point out with the third kind of soil, it says the worries or the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things. Guys, it's not necessarily sin. The third type of soil gets choked out not because of sin. These aren't necessarily bad things. Cares of this world, maybe you, you, you have legitimate concerns. Every one of us, we have legitimate concerns. Every one of us, it's not sin that's the problem. The thorns are not sins. The deceitfulness of riches. Oh, I got to make some money. God gave me this business. I got to steward it. But then you sacrifice your time in the word to do all these other things and you get distracted. The cares of this world, the cares of this life. Oh, kasi si ganyan, may sakit. Kailangan ko puntahan si ganito. Kailangan ko si ganito. Maybe, maybe the cares of this life are even ministry. It's not necessarily something bad. It even could be something good. Desires for other things. Maybe you desire to help people. Maybe you desire to reach out and do this and do that and pray for the sick and share the gospel. Sometimes ministry will even take you away from God. You know that? Ministry can become an idol. Not everything that is good is from God. Amen? Because God only gives the best. I'm not going to go into that. But uh, I have another message on that. But uh, anyway, so these things are not necessarily sins. But we have to guard our hearts because every single one of us has problems to deal with. How do you pre prevent yourself from this? Whatever you focus on gets bigger, like a camera. Anything you focus on, anything you zoom in on, it becomes bigger. So what are you zooming into? The cares, the problems, the, the riches, you need money for this, you want to buy this, kailangan ng bahay, down payment, koche, ganyan, ganyan. Desires for other things. Uh, I, I wasn't able to give my wife her, the, the wedding that she wanted. Babawi ako, gusto ko mag-tour kami ng ganito, ganyan. Is that what you're after? That will take you away from God. That will choke out the word and make it useless in your life. Why? Because if you actually knew the word, you would not worry. You would not be worried about riches. You would not be consumed about the cares of this world. Your desire for other things would die out. The only thing you would desire is Christ because you know that in Christ, He will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. That if you just stick to the Word, who is the Word? The Word is Christ. The Word is Jesus. He's the Word who became flesh. He is the Word. If you stick to Him, everything is in Him. Everything is there. You don't have to chase after these things. The things that take you away, the, the thorns and the thorny soil, are idols in your life. Things that appear to be good or like that, but really, it's still, it's not from God. You could have legitimate reasons to worry. I'm not saying that, no, kahit naman ako, kahit naman sino may, may inaalala, may problema. But if you let it rule your heart, it's gonna choke out the word of God. Remember, Matthew 6, 33 and 34, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Do not worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow, God's already there. Do not worry was not a request, it was a command. 
Hindi pa kiusap yung do not worry. Yung, oh, pag may time ha. Hindi. Jesus said, do not worry. He said that twice. Matthew 6.25 and Matthew 6.34. Do not worry. Mean it. He, 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 he really, di ba? Grabe. Ay, ay, ay. So I'm not saying that, you know, yung point ko, I, sometimes I get attacked by worry. I get attacked by certain bad thoughts. But I go back to the word and I say, Lord, it says here, seek first your kingdom. And when I seek you first, all these things will fall into place. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. Why? Because God is already there tomorrow. God exists outside of time. There is no past, present, future. It's one big now. So before you even have need of anything, your Father in heaven already knows. Matthew 6, 8. So he expects you to trust that he has tomorrow in his hand. Just trust him. He says, don't worry because why? Because he's got you. And those worries are what will choke out the power of his word. That will choke out your fruitfulness. That is why you will not be able to harvest if you focus on word. Okay? So, guys, why is it, again, seed time and harvest and all this stuff? God's provision for everything in this life is found in his word. Okay? If you go to his word, his word will fix you. If you go to his word, his word will give you life. You know, whatever the concern is. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. You need deliverance? Word. You need healing? Word. You need provisions? Word. Everything is in the word. That's why the word of God is alive and powerful. Right? Hebrews 4.12, right? So God's provision for everything is found in his word. If you're not reading your Bible, you are in trouble. Not religious reading. Again, Magbabasa ka nga kung bad intention or what, no plan. You're doing it for compliance. I've done that before. I read the Bible for college. I went, I went to a Christian university. I had super good grades for, for, for religion classes. I had to read my Bible for those three semesters. Did I learn anything? No. Because it went in up here and not in here. After that, I still destroyed my life after college. Why? Because the word that never went down here. It just got stuck in my head. Satan took it away. So you don't just read out of religious rote or, or requirements. Read it because you, want, you desire. See, guys, what I'm pointing at here today is that the important thing is not how much of the word... I mean, you need to know your word, okay? I'm there. Awesome, that's tough. But be careful that it's not just knowledge. Desire to know Him. Desire. You have to desire to know God. Because reading the word without that desire, you just end up a Pharisee. The Pharisees were experts at the word. I know many of them who are very experts and they know everything. They can quote chapters upon chapters and know this is the type, this is the political climate of this time. Dude, I really don't care because I don't see Christ in you. The Pharisees were the most horrible people. They look more like Satan than, than Jesus. The fulfillment of the word was there in front of them. They, they killed him. I mean, not sorry, they didn't kill him. They sentenced him to die. Jesus gave up his own life. He was not killed. Okay, so we have to desire, 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 desire. I cannot emphasize that so grabe. Desire to know God. You have to desire to know God and understand Him for who He is. You will never bear fruit if you don't plant any seeds in your heart. Diba? So you nag plant na ng seeds, hindi pa nga tumubo yung iba. Three out of four, hindi tumubo. Rocky soil, uh, the wayside footpath, or rocky soil, thorny soil. Yung tatlo, our 25% lang yung tumubo. Can you imagine that? We better make sure we're part of that 25%, you know? So, anyway, so I'm gonna wrap up. Mark 4 20, it says, Those are the ones whom, who, whom seed was sown on the good soil. Yeah, so, tayo yan. I believe everyone here watching, we are good soil, in Jesus' name. Huh? We are good soil. Then they hear the word, they accept it, they bear fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. Guys, we are designed to bear fruit. God's design for everything in this world is to multiply and bear fruit. God's design for, for fruit and seed and whatever, it's, it's guys, it is, it is super prosperity and hyper abundance. Why? How do you do this? Manga, mango tree. So mango season, it's summer, right? So you get one mango seed. One mango seed, you plant that, it comes alive, it becomes one mango tree. How many mangoes will a mango tree produce in its first harvest? 
Sabihin mo na, I don't know, 500 or something. Tuwing kailan harvest niyan? How many seeds are in those mangoes? So from one tree, you can plant 500. Every year, if you would plant every single seed that came out there, assuming all of them would come alive, you could cover the whole earth in... Diba? Guys, God's design was for no one to go hungry. God's design was for us to have exceeding abundantly more than we, we, what we can ask or think. But the problem is the fruitfulness of the word gets choked and, 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 and killed and all by, by these things. So we got to check our hearts and make sure that our hearts are, we have the proper desire to know God. Otherwise, our hearts will never be good soil. I want to bear fruit. We are supposed to be fruitful. John 15, 8, it says, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit. Okay? And so prove to me, my disciples. In, in, in another translation, I think NLT says, When you bear much fruit, you prove to be my true disciples. It gives great glory to the Father. Poverty doesn't give, that's false humility, okay? Get rid of your poverty mindset, throw that away. There is no poverty in the kingdom of heaven. Contentment is something else, I understand. But your mindset should be, I am prosperous because I have Jesus. If you really think, I don't, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> we don't have that. Point go, we need to be fruitful. And the way we are fruitful is if we stay connected to the true vine. Who is the true vine? Jesus. Who is Jesus? The Word. If you are connected to the Word, if you are deeply rooted in the Word, life will come about. Fruitfulness will come about. Then God will be glorified by your fruitfulness because you bear much fruit. It is a privilege to know God. We are so blessed. Another thing I want to point out with this, um, with the good soil, you, did you notice that the harvest varies? 30, 60, 100 fold. Earlier in this message, I told you guys, the seed does not change. The word of God is the word of God. It is incorruptible. It is perfect. It is absolutely, the potential for 100 is in every single seed of the word of God. Okay? The potential, as far as the word of God is concerned, Bawat isang word of God, kung may physical seed yan, na incorruptible, every single one of those has the potential for hundredfold harvest. But even in good soil, there is a variance. What is that variance? Kasi, di ba? Kasi the, the word of God is constant. Eh? Yung power niya is the same power. But the heart, there is variance. And I believe that variance is indicated here in Luke 8 verse 15. I have two more verses. Luke 8, verse 15, it says, But the seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart. Man. And hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. Yan ang difference ng 30, 60, 100 fold. Good soil is an honest and good heart that holds fast to the word with perseverance. Can you hold fast to the word? When, 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 when the flames are right in front of you, when you fall into the fire, when the enemy throws you into the fire, can you hold on to the word of God? Will you hold fast? Will you persevere? When people are persecuting you and saying bad things about you, even though they don't know you, even though they've never heard you say anything or what, they just hate you just for the sake of hating you. Can you hold fast to the word? Can you persevere? Desire to bear fruit, guys. Desire to bear fruit. Your desire... To, to be fruitful, the heart condition, the heart mind, the mind, the mindset, and the heart condition that I am supposed to be fruitful. I want to be fruitful, Lord. I'm gonna immerse myself in your word because I want to bear much fruit. I want to give glory to you, Lord. If that is your mindset, you you can get a hundredfold. Hindi pwede yung pwede na mentality. Hindi yung Lord kahit isang fruit lang. False humility yun. Tapon mo yung religious yun. Okay. If God says I can get a hundred, I want a hundred. If God is going to give me anything, I want it. Because God only gives good gifts. Every good and perfect gift is from above. James 1.17. So I desire the word. I desire to be fruitful. That is my heart condition. That is my heart, my mindset, my life. I want to be fruitful. And here's the thing. So if you guys are gar or have experience with gardening or farming, it's my last point. In one garden, in one farm... You notice that there are different kinds of soil even in the same plot. 
There's an area that's a little bit more damp. There's an area that must must okay. There's an area that may do to There's an area for whatever reason of it that is. In your garden, there's an area na may okay, may area na hindi na arawan, may ganyan. Parang buhay natin yun. Our lives are the same. Think of your life as a garden. Because you could be super fruitful in, in discipleship and you're such a good and faithful leader. You're super good in encouragement. But you have no fruit in healing. Or you have zero fruit in spiritual gifts. In, when it comes to spiritual gifts, your heart is the footpath where Satan just you know, your heart has been hardened. Or yung mga iba naman, super lalim sa, sa spiritual gifts, pero sa prosperity, wala. Laging kulang, laging nagmamakaawa, wala ang pera, wala ang ganito, gutom, Lord, gutom, ganyan. You need that area in your garden, that area in your garden, your life, the area of finance and prosperity, you need to plant the word there. You need to till the soil. Check your soil, guys. Check your hearts. Ano yung area mo sa buhay mo na hindi ka fruitful? You know it. I know it. So whatever area that is, you need a revelation of that. You plant the seed of the word in that part of your garden, that part of your life, that area of your heart. Because you could be fruitful in other aspects, but in this one little aspect, maybe relationships, maybe finance, maybe healing, maybe prosperity, maybe discipleship, I don't know, maybe ministry, whatever it is sa buhay mo na hindi nagbe-bear fruit, that's not normal. Check your heart. Go back to the word. Plant that seed. Plant that seed. Burrow it in that soil. Check your heart. Godly fellowship is so important. Accountability is so important. Guys, you know, like, I am very intentionally accountable to the to my... I have mentors. I have a pastor that I submit myself to. And, and um, I give them authority to speak in my life and rebuke me. Why? Because if not, you're going to fall. You're going to mess up if you don't have accountability. You need someone to, to, to be accountable with and do life together that you can check your heart because you can't always see what's wrong with you. Sometimes you need someone to do it. And, and anyway, it's just a reminder for everyone that if there's an area in your life that you are not fruitful, check your soil, check your heart. Why is it the way it is? But the solution is always the same, the Word of God. Amen? Now you guys know why I love my Bible so much and why I read my Bible so much. Amen? I'm going to end with this verse. In John 6, verse 63, it says, It is the Spirit who gives life. Flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. The words of God, the words of Jesus are spirit and life. What else do you need? Guys, lahat ng pinagdadasal nyo, lahat ng problema nyo sa buhay nyo, lahat ng pinagdadaanan nyo sa buhay nyo, ang sagot nasa Word of God. Go find it. Go dig into it. Be deeply rooted in the Word. And if, you, if there's an area in your life na hindi ka fruitful, check your heart. Amen? So I pray that that was a, a message that spoke to you guys. It was a very basic but foundational message, but I pray that it really, it goes straight to your heart. Learn to love the Word of God. Desire it. I can't teach you desire. You have to want it for yourself. Desire to know God. Desire to know His place. Desire to know Him. Desire and believe that the Word of God is alive. They are spirit and they are life. Amen? Let's pray. So Lord God, Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are watching. I lift up to you every single person here. Lord, thank you for this truth of your Word for, uh, that you have given us everything we need and everything is in your Word. Whenever we are not fruitful, Lord, something's wrong. You said that when we are, we are attached to the true vine, you, the word, Lord, we will bear fruit. Apart from you, we can do nothing. It gives great glory to you, Father, when we bear fruit. Therefore, we desire to be fruitful. So, Lord, we know that there are no shortcuts. Today, we commit to really go, to really go and dig in to your word. So, Father, the seeds planted today, I speak life upon them to the soil, the hearts of every single person watching here. I speak fruitfulness upon you. I pray that you will receive revelation upon revelation of truth in the word of God, that you will see the same truths that we preach here in this ministry. It's all from seeds planted in our heart that these truths have been revealed. Lord God, we thank you for your love and for your grace. We thank you for blessing us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for everything. And Father, I just... I speak life, fruitfulness, peace, abundance, joy, prosperity, 
restoration, healing upon every single person watching this. Speak blessings and blessings upon them. And Father, I thank you for their lives. So Lord, we just thank you for this time. We lift this up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So guys, it was good to see you. Again, uh, for those who watched late, uh, send in questions on this page. We're going to do another video Q&A. May not be me. I'll do probably some of them, but some of our leaders in, in the Metanoia Christian Ministries will be uh, doing videos as well. So please send in questions. Doesn't have to be just about this message. Kung may napupusuan kang whatever. Kung hindi man namin masagot sa videos, masagotin namin via messenger also. Okay, so we'll be back again tomorrow. God bless you all. Guys, I love you so much with the love of Jesus. And I am blessed to be here and share this word with you. God bless you. See you tomorrow.